uh, yeah, sure. So it's always interesting. Um, I, I, I keep things pretty like back down to sales fundamentals when it comes to stuff like this. So where people may be like, oh, the subject heading and the subject line and all these things, I'm like, that's all great. Uh, but realistically, you want to go back to trying to work out what are we trying to do? So the first thing I do is like for an SDR, for a junior rep, think about your mindset. What's the objective? Right. So you're sending out this cold email. The first thing is, what am I trying to achieve? Right. So what I want to do is try and give something that is going to be a, a balanced value exchange from like trying to get time back from that individual. So that individual is like, I don't know, it might be 15 minutes or 20 minutes. So I'm I, that's kind of the starting point. I, I need to give something of value. Right. And what do people like? They like to be educated, tell them something they don't know and they like to be entertained. And then there comes things around like love and life. But I don't really think we're selling many things that is going to improve someone's love life. <laughs> so it's usually around the educational thing and uh, and the entertaining. So I focus on that. Then it's like, OK, what, what's your personality type and what do you have in your hands? Right. To, to kind of deliver that. And then you get into the fundamentals of making sure that it's short and snappy. Um, I mean, there's some incredible stuff out there, as you know, from like the likes of Will and his team over at Lavender uh, around like what the structure of some of that information should look like. So I'd be like, download everything from there to help you. But outside of that, you know, really short um, uh, uh, subject line, no no lies, don't be deceitful, be really honest, keep it snappy, two or three words. In the context, one thing that I like to do is try to position the cold email like it's something that's going to be internal. So um, it's got a reference point. If you found information um, on their website, or one thing I love to do is go and check job descriptions, right? So if you check a job description and you'll find out like what's the top types of things they're looking for re regarding like um, top of mind programs or initiatives, because they'll say, hey, we're hiring for this person for this particular project or technology. And then I will put it in the email body. So I'll put like re something or I'll put that in bold. Now, the reason why is because they're not going to really read your first email. You know how it is, right? You've got to have a couple of touch points. So what I'd say is if you, you want it to feel like an internal meeting, so internal communication. So when that uh, that executive or individual searches their inbox for that term, because it's an internal term, your email pops up and they're like, oh, didn't see this. Right. So it's just a really small little hack that I've used before. And I always uh, train reps on to do that. They wouldn't usually think about. So. I'd say all the fundamentals, there's enough out there. Remember the objective and do small things like make sure that it feels internally, by um, it feels internal by looking for things that they will be talking about internally. Best practices for prospecting on LinkedIn is do not prospect on LinkedIn. I know it sounds counter counterintuitive, but hear me out. Link Nobody wants to be sold to on LinkedIn and it's like everyone's they're expecting it so just don't do it like literally don't do it so i always say when you are re connect with everybody all the time that's the first thing max out your connections but connect with people who you feel uh can can answer two questions for you one you'll learn from them at some point even now or in the future or two you can offer them something something of value again right so um and of course the, the last part is usually um people that you can at some point may be a good fit for your products or services. So I, that's the first thing. Now, just not connecting and pitching is a pattern interrupt. So immediately they're like, they're waiting. They're like, okay, this person's going to pitch to me. And you're like, just saying hi. And they're like, what? what's going on here? Right. So I always say do that just so you immediately set yourself um, aside from all of the other reps who are not doing that. The next thing is um, is nurturing your network list. So everybody you connected with, you might have sent out 100 um, connection requests, you get like 30 accepted. Make a habit on a Friday of sending a video message to them. Now, there's a lot of incredible tools to help do that with the tracking, but LinkedIn's native one is always going to get the best results because no one, it, it, you don't leave the app. So if you send a video that's just like, hey, thank you so much, Rita, for connecting with me. Pleasure to have you in my network. Who knows what could happen? Literally, just that. That's it, right? Again, they're expecting you to pitch. You haven't. But if you nurture those connections, um, I'm sure it's feeding the algorithm in some way. If they've opened it, they've watched it, so all of those things, right? But if you get into the habit of doing that, one, you increase your video confidence. Two, you get a bit closer and you stand out above the other reps. And three, it's good for you because maybe they may be like, oh, let me just check your profile on your website and mix that. Oh, I quite like this. I, I like what you guys are doing. So. It's not pitching or prospecting, it's just nurturing and building a community. Um, the other thing I will say is 
is generally do try and figure out like every time your marketing team or your learning stuff, share it with the people that you're connecting with. Just just share it with them. Just say, hey, I, I saw this and I look at your site and connected the dots. And that's it. Don't expect anything back. So I always just say, don't prospect on LinkedIn, but just try and nurture your connections. And off the, and the offset of that is people will come to you because they're used to you posting stuff. Okay, so uh, so how do I stay up to date? Well, I usually lead or hire SDRs, so I'm speaking to a lot of them. And I learn a ton from actually speaking to SDRs because they're right in the trenches. So you can read a million blogs, but you speak to an SDR, they'll tell you exactly what's happening. Like, it's really hard or it's really great or well, that doesn't work. So I do that a lot. So I, I, I'm connected to a ton of them. They often ask me questions, but I'll, I'm learning from them. Like, what are you doing? What's happening? Um, the other thing I do is I, I try to I try to narrow down who I'm listening to. So there's a ton of people on LinkedIn in these spaces that you can um, that you can learn from. Just find three or four people around specifically around you know SDR trends, SDR leaders who are trying to approach the problem and or uh, approach the role in different ways. So you may say, hey, if I'm thinking about creating the best emails and staying up to date with the trends, I'm going to follow Will. If I want to understand like how do I really have a uh, go from that cold email to that cold call. I might go after Josh Braun. Uh, and then I'm thinking, so you try and like carve out those people for each part of your your outbound. But that's that's what I'd say. That's the best way to um, kind of keep up to date with stuff. Um, I'd also say um, don't, when you are, if you want to improve your skill set as an SDR, don't just sit on your AE's calls uh, with without any direction. So I actually, at one point, I remember stopping my SDR uh, team that I was um, kind of player coaching. And I said, you're not going to join any AE calls. They're like, what? Why not? I said, because you're doing it. Like, what did you learn off the last call? Oh, you know, they. I'm like, you have to be really directional. So I'd say, go in and say, today, I'm going to listen to AE calls because I want to hear how they structure price. That's it. Just And focus in on that, everything that's tied to that, because then you can um, focus on building a, on a skill set. But just listening to all the calls, you're, you're going to adopt some of their bad practices. You don't want to do that. <laughs> so that's kind of my, like my main three points. So definitely, from I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I look for. I'm literally hiring SDRs as we speak, right? So um, I'm looking for people with drive, um, drive and grit. So what is it beyond needing a job that drives you and motivates you to, to propel yourself forward? Like, what is it that, that energizes you? So that's how I start to see it. And I always find that there's a story behind something that's like, oh, I'm just really hard working and I was part of the, you know, this university team. And I'm just like, forget that stuff. Like, what is it internally about your character? That means that even on the days where you feel like, oh, I can't be bothered, you're like, I've got a bigger mission. So I want to try and find out stuff like that. I'm looking for people that are curious um, and also resourceful. So um, curiosity is actually something that I think you can train and build on through exercises in teams. So like I, I, I do this thing with teams where I'm just like, just ask about your weekend and do not stop the conversation. What did you do? I went out to, oh, I went out for, for lunch. Who did you go with? I went here. What was it like? What was on the menu? What options did you consider? Like just keep asking questions so you can get used to doing that. We actually, we actually don't ask a lot of questions in our day to day life. We just kind of like say something and we're like, yeah, whatever, didn't hear it. So I do a lot of listening and questioning exercises. So um, yeah, so uh, drive, grit, uh, curiosity, resourcefulness, uh, somebody who is, um, someone who isn't always waiting to be told what to do and finding an, a way out. So right, there are, I've been in situations where a rep may say, I ran out of data, so I'm just chilling. I'm like, what? <laughs> so like someone who's who's puts pressure on their leader to be like, what's next? I need feedback. Did you listen to my call? What do you think of that email? What else could I do? Who should I listen to? What book could I read? So they're, they're constantly looking for at doing stuff. And it seems like a lot of things, but if you are excited about the career opportunities and life opportunities that sales can provide you with, and sales adjacent roles as well, then that should you should you, that should come quite naturally. So I look at some of those. Um, I, I look at some of those signs. So I say the biggest thing for me when it comes to metrics is you should be thinking about how many people have I had a two way dialogue with. So I always I know we might start to a lot of people discuss it as like a a quality connection, a quality interaction, a meaningful connect where you actually did something outwardly and you got some kind of response, right? So an unsubscribe, a no, a yes, a maybe, a send me something. When you start to look at that, you'll realize, oh, wow, I, whatever I'm doing, 
I, I'm just having a conversation with myself. I'm literally looking in the mirror right now and just pitching <laughs> myself. So try and figure out, I'm doing all this stuff. Yep, I've got high volume of activity, but how many things, like how many interactions have I really had? Because I think the rest is vanity. Um, and if you carefully construct stuff, you'll find when you get really creative and you find different ways to, to kind of increase your response rates, you can do half of the amount of activity that's expected of you and get a higher result just because you're working smarter. Um, I was that person. I broke the rules all the time. It was just like, you haven't made 100 calls. I'm like, but I've had 20 conversations. I didn't need to make 100 calls, <laughs> right? So it, it, I always say your leader does not care if you made 200 calls or free if you book a meeting. They don't care, but they need to know that you're doing the work, right? So that's why that's why we have these um, leading indicators and these um, other activity metrics. So things that keep me motivated, I will always do an at-home workout. I probably work out five times a week, five to six times a week. So that's like how I start my day most days. I didn't work out today and I feel like I should have worked out today. <laughs> um, I was really sluggish and I was like, I should have worked out today. Um, but I also listen to, um, there's this, it's funny, I, I had this as like my stage song when I was doing a, a, a keynote not too long ago, but uh, Bruno Mars Finesse with Cardi B. That's like my, if that comes on, I'm like, yeah, let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Like I'm ready to. I'm ready to pump it up. I'm like you might have to put on the clean version, uh, but yeah, I, that will always get me like, all right, I'm ready to rock and roll. Let me get organized. Yeah, that's my tune.